Pleasant good morning to all of you. Let us all rise as we start our service today. Let us all pray. Our Father, we are truly grateful. You have allowed us to come to your house to worship. At the same time, we are aware that we are not the only one worshiping today. Others are joining us through live streaming. O oh Lord, at the most, we will be in your house, maybe an hour or more. Would you meet us? Settle our fears. Equip us with your courage. For tomorrow is another day of battle. Remind us nga ang gubat, hindi man sa amon. The battle belongs to you. My Lord, we come to you as wounded people. Wounded because life and the reality of COVID doesn't sit down and negotiate. And therefore, Father, would you please embrace us? Use your word. Hallelujah. Use the presence of each one to encourage us today. And as for the virus, we do our best to protect ourselves, but more than that, Lord, we trust you. Ang imong hamili nga dugo, magatabon sa mua, have mercy. Father, do not allow us to go home just doing religion. In Jesus' name, we humbly pray. Amen. Please be seated. And it is our desire that as we worship the Lord today, that we will be focused on what God is saying and what God is doing. Later, uh, your face shield should put, always be on and mask and wait for our instructions. By the way, I was instructed by our uh, team that some cannot book because they have no data. Uh, we can afford for you who are watching live stream, at least 50 people for walk-in, uh, you can come. Sayo lang yud mo, so you can go through the health uh, protocols. It's good to be in God's house today. Moments from now, we will take time to pray. And our theme for the year 2021 is a year of prayer and a year of spiritual depth. Sana tandaan po ninyo yan, ano? A year of prayer and a year of spiritual depth. And our verse, Psalm 62, 5, Let all that I am wait patiently, wait quietly before God, for my hope is in Him. You know what I did? Since I will use that verse for the whole year, I got a post-it, Sa door, dashboard, just to remind yourself. Very powerful verse. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in Him. Every time I look at that verse, the Lord speaks volumes of truth. So what I did, I contacted my friend last night. He's, kasi sa pandemic, Na he, na he, I asked him to yeah, no, yun, woodworks put that verse I want to put that on my door and really for the whole year I don't know your style but secondly the way I apply that is that part wait quietly before God at least five minutes of waiting no word no nothing just hilom lang no and I found out that it's very irritating just to be quiet before God. But initially, waiting before God for five minutes accomplished three things. Just, just to be quiet before God. Look at the verse, wait quietly before God. It's not just wait quietly. It's quit quietly before God. I think I took some notes. Three things it accomplished if you take five minutes to wait. 
The way I do that, uh, the coffee, five minutes mga basa in it. Number one, first benefit of that is it delays my impulsive reactions. That, that's good. It delays my impulsive reaction. Um, tweet, Facebook. I mean, it's been some time now that the Lord has been telling us to wait. I think that's a timely message for 2021. Number two, it deepens patience. Five minutes. Five minutes. Just do nothing. Just, it deepens patience. Right? You know, patience. That's the problem Samoa kay when I want to do something, I do it immediately. And sometimes, uh, especially when you are right, wait quietly. Number three, it defies addiction to always be in control. Take five. Can we do that as a church? Take five. I don't know. Early in the morning. You need your alarm clock. Na ako sa cell phone. It's five minutes. So I find that very beneficial. So many things to pray this week. Things happening in America. Let us not join the politics. Let's pray. The church there needs prayer. I can't imagine if I am a U.S. pastor today and in the midst of all of this, Lord have mercy. Especially our group, Southern Baptist, because... We've danced with politics lately. Yeah, pray. Pray for our missionaries because number two, pray for our country. Pray for us. Pray for pray for if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven. Forgive their sins and heal their land. A boy named Jeremy needs prayer. Bangitaon ng bataa. Surgery. May gamay ng komplikasyon. I mean, I really it's not that good news. Pray for those who are helping. No, pray for Joel, Brother Twila, and the rest who are helping this boy. Just pray that at this age might come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray for 2021. Gonna be tough. Go back to the verse again. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in Him. Not an accident because last Sunday, first verse for the year was Psalm 37, 7 to 8. Be still in the presence of the Lord. Wait patiently for Him to act. Why? Because we always are disturbed while, especially those of you who have a strong sense of justice, when God delays it, you react. I read again the verse. Don't worry about when evil people prosper, or fret when their wicked schemes. And that's for all of us. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. Shall we pray?
We wait quietly before you, O God. Help us endure and enjoy the discipline of silence. And we need your grace. Lord, before we even step into your sanctuary, you have all nagastorya ka naman sa mua. So we will connect with what you're saying to us in our rooms we call quiet time and to what you will say to us to your church because they are greatly connected. We lift up to you the crisis in the U.S. Lord, we ask that you intervene, especially among your people wherein the gospel, Christianity as a whole, has always been assaulted. But now the enemy is within. Oh God, we pray for our country that we learn our lesson that pride goeth before a fall. No tyrant is happy. No dictator is at peace. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Have mercy. Quiet our hearts. Especially when we feel we are so right. Especially when we are so passionate into something not glorifying to you anymore. So Lord, bitterness and resentment has been implanted in the hearts of those who are faithful, virtuous, righteous, hardworking, like the workers in the vineyard who are so resentful when the latecomers came in and they were rewarded the same. Lead us to gratitude. May we be sensitive to you as a church on how you are silencing us this year. Hear our prayers. For Jeremy, Lord, the family, thank you for the hearts who are helping this boy, the doctors, the unknown friends, and blessed be your name. We pray now for this time we are in church and for those who are in live streaming, maybe someone out there is watching with a heavy heart. We pray in the name of Jesus that the, uh, your presence would comfort. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. We cannot sing. Uh, the EO is clear. But we realize that we can ask someone to sing. Pero in our heart. We man siguro, pero... We'll ask Kate to hear our prayers, O oh Lord. You just have to sing from the heart. And maybe it's better this way.
5, 2020. And how we're gonna face 2021. For you have been my strength. All rise, please. Kate, would you sing that part? And let's in our hearts. standing for a reading of the Holy Scriptures. Read it once, read it slow, prayerfully, allowing Holy Spirit to speak. Psalm chapter 30, I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. You refused to let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, I cried to you for help. You restored my health. Isn't that a prayer you can identify? You restored my health. You brought me up from grave. Oh Lord, you kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing to the Lord, all godly ones. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only for a moment. But his favor last for a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. When I was prosperous, I said, nothing can stop me now. Your favor, O oh Lord, made me as secure as a mountain. Then you turned away from me. I was shattered. I cried out to you, O Lord. I begged the Lord for mercy, saying, What will you do if I die? What will you gain if I die? If I sink into the grave, and my dust praised you, can it tell of your faithfulness? Hear me, Lord. Mercy on me. Help me, Lord. If you don't know how to pray, you can start with that prayer. Hear me, Lord. Mercy on me. Help me. Powerful prayer. You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. I might sing praises to you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. This is the word of God. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. You can remove your face shields for a while and then later ibalik lang nato when we go home. Be sure to listen to God's word today. Listen like you don't want to miss a word, for every word is important. Listen like it's your last time to listen, and I preach like as if it were my last time to preach. That's the way it is. We started the year 2021 embarking to a long journey towards spiritual depth. That term will be repeated, spiritual depth, spirituhan ng pagkalalom. 
We made it clear to ourselves, and we will find me repeating this Sunday after Sunday if necessary. We made it clear to ourselves that spiritual depth is impossible without spiritual life in Christ. You know the meaning of that? Religion cannot give you life. Christ can give you life. Baptism cannot give you life. Doing good works cannot give you life. Therefore, my prayer that somehow you and I would be sure in our hearts that there is spiritual life by faith in Christ. By faith in Christ. We also concur that the spiritual journey to spiritual depth is about our being alone with God and our going along with others. Remember the battery double A, alone and along. In our moments of aloneness, we meet God. But that is not completely God's design. Alone, but we also need to get along with others. So, karon pa lang, I'm reminding you that in your journey to spiritual depth, you cannot be solo. You need others. Let us not forget to resist the temptation of being wordly. No, 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 not wordly. Wordy. Mabunganga. Word from the word wordy. Resist that. So we can ap apply Psalm 62, 5, especially that part that says, quietly wait before the Lord. For the year 2021, we will be guided by the words, three words, all starts with letter S in our pursuit of spiritual depth. Number one, silence. That's hard for me. That's hard for my club members who belong to the Sanguine Club. Silence. But try. Uh, if I were the Pope, which is I nalang dili, I will declare a year of silence. Especially when you're right. Especially when your ideas are good. Our model there is Zechariah. Remember last Christmas, Zechariah. Number two, it's a year of seclusion. Our model there is Elizabeth. When she found out she's pregnant at her old age, she said, I need five months to let it sink. Dihagi kan tung take five. Not really five months, maybe habitual five minutes of seclusion every day. The context of this seclusion is not suffering. The context of this is favor, bless. I'm healthy. Before you, basta, take five. Trust lang gamay. As a result of that, ako din, I have to apply that myself. I think it was yesterday, I was talking to Pastor Nermel Popong. Uh, I write my column on Sunstar every week. And I talked to my editor and said, you give me six months, January to June this year, to write nothing. I'm glad he allowed me. Why? Because too much talk, too much tweet, too much lack of depth. If you want to follow me, then your style. But as a church, we will. Seclude. And then we will be reminded of sovereignty. And then our model there is Mary. How can I be 
Give birth, I am a virgin. And Angel Gabriel said, For the word of God will not fail. Can I, uh, can I just take that idea for a while? For the word of God will not fail. Now, for me, it is clear, it says, For the word of God will not fail. It did not say, your interpretation of the word of God will not fail. Part of your great disappointment today is because you interpreted God's word to accommodate your pain. And you will be surprised. It hurts. So, ang sovereignty di ay, the word of God will not fail. Not your interpretation, not your favorite author of your devotional. It helps but the word of God. You know, as a Baptist, I'd like to remind you, our loyalty is in the word of God, not the pastor's interpretation of the word of God, not, not your own interpretation of the word of God, for you can be wrong. The word of God will not fail. Take that three SSS. Let us reverently grow deep in this path of faith, and grace, and don't you forget the word, together. Today, we talk about a rare path of spiritual depth. Rare because nobody wants to talk about it. I'm also scared to talk about it. I want to talk about, it's about admitting and accepting spiritual loss. So the title of the sermon today is From Spiritual Loss to Spiritual Depth. How long? I don't know. A lot of mysteries in between. It dawned on me that as you grow old, life is a series of losses. You lose your youth one morning. Ama? You lose your health. You lose your kids when they grow up. You lose your a lot of losses. But this morning, let's talk about spiritual loss. Should be worried if you cannot smell because probably that's a sign of COVID. Could be worried if you could not taste. That's a sign of that. Look, ano? Every morning, gajagging ko, masimhuta na ako itong mga baboy sa mong silingan. Hindi naman ko masuko eh. Ako salamat. Kasimhut pa. Spiritual loss is something there. Once you are sensitive to God now, no more. Spiritual loss can happen to a church. And therefore, it's a journey from mourning to dancing. As we go through this mysterious process of spiritual purging. It seemed to me that the word for the year is last year was purging. And what is the word for 2021? Purging pa more. Spiritual purging where you detox. No, sabi siya pa, purga, so that the spiritual detox would come out. Purging. We realize the truth that sadness and gladness, mourning and dancing are necessary steps as we learn the waltz in grace. Now, there's wisdom in the thought that someone said, those who... Those who are not sad cannot be glad. What is spiritual loss? What is spiritual loss? It is not spiritual death. And yet it's a death-like experience of what was once vibrant and alive. But now flickering, fading, and gone. That's spiritual loss. Now, here we go. It is spiritually 
It is a spiritually depleted life. Not of an unbeliever, but of a child of God. You feel that? Depleted. A reality that many of us refuse to admit, many of us refuse to accept because depleted. One popular speaker said, it happened to him when he is speaking everywhere. People are blessed. People admire you. People congratulate you. Pero sa sulod, depleted. That's spiritual loss. It can happen to a church. Church of Ephesus. Particularly in Revelation. The angel said to the church, or God tells the angel, say to the church, you've lost your first love. Lost your first love. And from here, I want to glorify God, how patient God is from the moment you receive Christ until the moment you want to pray, until the moment you want to love God, until the moment you want to read the Bible, God is so patient. And then the moment you have it, like an unbelievable cycle of backsliding, you're back, square one. Father Henry Nowen describes it like this. You may remember a time long ago when Jesus was so real for you, you had no doubt about his presence in your life. Once he was your dearest and most intimate friend, counselor, and guide. He gave you comfort, courage, confidence. You could feel him, yes, taste him, touch him. And now, what happened? You see, when you want to talk about spiritual depth, the beginning is now. Where are you now? Not three years ago. What happened? And the honest Catholic priest said, you no longer feel him in your life or think of him very much. You no longer desire to spend an hour in his presence. You even wonder if he has even more than just a figure out of a storybook of your imagination. Just to give you a picture of, can you go, are you in that situation? Is the church in that situation? Maybe. Spiritual loss. How do you deal with that? This courageous Catholic priest gave me evangelical courage to face some issues. We need to ask ourselves in this journey of spiritual depth questions. Like, number one, is there a way for that which is lost to be found? May paagi ba lang ah, malukat ni kung naprenda man? Is there a way? Can sadness turn to gladness? Can mourning really lead to dancing? When weeping lasts for the night, does joy really comes in the morning? Questions. Psalm chapter 30 is our text. Provides a record of this journey, a map, pathway that the psalmist took from spiritual loss to spiritual death. Pero, we must resist the temptation for looking at the psalm for a magic formula to instant healing. There is no such thing as instant spiritual growth. When you read the book of Psalms, read the context, not just the favorite verse. Don't look for a formula. Rather, let us look at it as a purging process of the soul. There goes the word again, purging. It says in the Psalm, weeping may last your anger for a moment but your favor for a lifetime. 
You know, in COVID term, vaccine, painful for a moment. Ugh. But the effect for a lifetime, maybe. Today we say, God, you have abandoned us. God, where are you? God, God, have mercy. Especially the more you pray, the more infected you become. That is a crisis. So we ask the question, in this journey of loss, of spiritual death, we will be guided by three letter G words. Number one, we talk about grief. That's something we don't want to do. Some of you shortcut it. That's why you're not well even now. You deny it. One friend of mine said, in this COVID captivity, a pastor is depressed and he would say, what I don't want is to talk to another pastor because they will give me cliché. God is good all the time. Grief. Number two, we talk about grace. I know you heard that, but never shalt thou underestimate grace. As it says, it still amazes me. And number three, the suspicion of it all, is it possible to have gladness in times of bad news? And Remember those three Gs. But while we talk about Psalm, I want you to remember the background. The background is 2 Samuel 24, verse 10 to 25. I think we need to read. Okay, ra? Let us read. That's the background. But after David has taken census, God says, don't, take, don't number my troops. David numbered. David's conscience began to bother him. And he said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly by taking census. Please forgive my guilt for doing this foolish thing. Stop. You can ask for forgiveness, but it doesn't erase the consequence. If you're a leader, other people pay the consequences. Next. The next morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet God, who was David's seer. This was the message. Go and say to David, this is what the Lord says. I'll give you three choices. <laughs> Choose one of these punishments. I will inflict it on you. So God came to David and asked him, Will you choose three years of famine throughout your land, three months of fleeing from your enemies, or three days severe plague? Like palagay ko COVID, three days of severe plague throughout your land. Who will I choose? Think this over and decide I should give the Lord who sent me. Verse 14. I am in a desperate situation, David replied. But let, take note of that. But let me fall into the hands of the Lord for his mercy is great. Do not let me fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel that morning. It lasted for three days. And a total of 70,000 died throughout the nation from Dan, the north, and Beersheba in the south. But the angel was preparing to destroy Jerusalem. The Lord relented and said to the death angel, Stop, that is enough. In his anger will not last for a long time. Sana, no? COVID, tama na. Stop. Keep reading. At the moment the Lord was threshing, at that moment the angel of the Lord was at the threshing floor of Arauna, the Jebusite. When David saw the, the angel, he said to the Lord, I am the one who has sinned and have done wrong. These people are innocent as sheep. What have they done? Let your anger fall against me and my family. The day God came to David said to him, go up, 
and build an altar to the Lord, the threshing floor of Arauna and Ajibusad. When the Lord asks you to build an altar, it means like we're in talking terms again. So David went up and the Lord commanded him. And when Arauna saw the king and his men coming toward him, he came bowed down before the king and his face to the ground. Have you come, my Lord, king? Arauna asked. David replied, I have come to buy your threshing floor and build an altar to the Lord so that he will stop the plague. Take it, my Lord. You sit as you wish, Rauna said to David. Here are oxen for the burnt offering you can use, threshing boards and ox yokes and wood, build the fire, the altar. I will give it all to you, your majesty, and may the Lord God accept your sacrifice. The king replied, no, I insist of buying it. I will not present burnt offerings to the Lord, my God, that cost me nothing. So David paid him 50 pieces of silver for the threshing floor and the oxen. David built an altar there to the Lord, sacrificed burnt offering, peace offering. And the Lord answered the prayer of his land. The plague of Israel was stopped. That's the context when he says, Favor will come next morning. That's the context when David said, Forgive me. Number one, from loss, death, grief. By grief, I also mean godly repentance. Would you take note? If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sins, and will restore the land. Whatever happens in our country and the entire world, God's people has a direct connection to everything. Amen. What did God say? If, if, Nebuchadnezzar, if the Babylonians, Egyptians, my people. And today in the context, if my church will call on my name. What is grief? You find that in verse 6. Ang umpisa maunio. When I was prosperous, I said, nothing can stop me now. When David censors the army, that's how he felt. The greatest nation on planet earth, the, the most wealthiest. Individually, you must have felt that way, whether you say it or not. At the time of your height of your blessing, even though there's pandemic, ang akong banana cake nahalin. Diba? I mean, akong silinga ng kasakit, pero kami, what good me na appeal. Careful, because... Instead of giving praise, it might just turn to, you are not exempted from David. Never shall you excuse yourself, my friend. Charles Spurgeon, I like this old Baptist preacher. When the Lord blessed you today, he tries you on another. Nama? The bless you today, he tries you. Kambal, blessing, trial, blessing, trial. Not all blessing without trial, because this must be prevented. No one can stop me now. So far, so good. Your favor made me as secure as a mountain. Take note, your favor, not my hard work, not my good reputation, not my prayer, your favor. And then when the Lord sends your proud, you turn away from me, I was shattered. This is what Spurgeon is saying. Favored, shattered, favored, shattered, all for God's glory so that the child of God can grow deep. Favored, shattered, shattered, favor. Verse 8. I cried out, O Lord, I beg you for mercy. What will I gain if I die? This is at the height of the plague, no? If I sink into the grave, can my dust praise you? Can it tell of your faithfulness? 
Would you look at verse 2? O oh Lord, I cried to you for help and you restored my health. It is assumed that when the Lord sent the plague and many people got sick, that included David, he got sick too. Of course. Hindi niya madawat, it's my doing, but others are paying for it. I think that's a little conscience there. So grieving, mourning, lamenting are mysterious ingredients of spiritual depth that many of us need. It is here we learn to mourn alone and then mourn along. We need a community that allows grieving and respect mourners. May I borrow the term of the navigators? I think this is what we need more than discipleship and rigid training and we become an alongsider. Marag apple cider, no? Alongsider. That's a nice term. What is an alongsider? Just walk along. Not to lecture, but to listen. Too much words. Not to interpret the suffering, but as a wounded person, feel the suffering of others, not as a superior human being. You know why people stay away from you? Because your, your arrive is, you're so deep and you're so superior. And a, an alongsider is just wounded, mampud siya. Tama? It's like someone who's wounded placing his arms, someone who's wounded, and let's walk together. We don't know the purpose, but I'll stay with you. Amen. Like that psychologist who said, or counselor who said, he wrote books about psychology when it was his turn. It's your turn. It's your turn to be counseled. Happens to anyone. He can only remember one friend who would come to his house 4 p.m. for the next month. One uh, next month, good. What is he doing? He will just massage his foot. No words, no nothing. Alongside her. My dear brothers and sisters, being Reading the book of Psalms, Bible scholars divided the book of Psalms into two. One lament and the other one praise. Remember the word lament, praise. You cannot praise without lament. You cannot stay lamenting for joy comes in the morning. But one thing is true. Spiritual loss cannot find its way to spiritual depth without grieving. The problem of many of us is we have never learned how to humbly grieve. Sa tuang mga nangawala, spiritual loss, I'm saying. You just quietly pretended that you're moving on. But you have never paused, repented, and grieved. As God makes it clear to you and to me, as we humbly see the reality of our losses, especially spiritual loss, let us mourn before the Lord. I will be very cautious but transparent. What are my spiritual loss? Not yours, mine. I took the pen. It's not in my outline. It's in the side, meaning dugang. I have to be honest with myself. I need words. I'll show you a little longer list. I feel this is where I am. I hope ma makita na. Number one, loss of fire. Just, what? Lost of fire. Can you accept that from a pastor? Lost fire? Or two, 
embarrassingly loss of face. Face all sort. I feel some of you there are deeper compared to us here. Loss of faith. Loss of grace. It's just been very cruel lately. Loss of compassion. Especially when you see those people who violate health protocol, mauna ang judgment kaysa sa kalooy. Wa man ang Facebook, o Facebook, nag face shield, wa man. I find myself losing compassion. Especially when I see elderly roaming around, walking, ging nagbawal. Manangoy, pabadlong. Pero ba yag basig walay masugo, mo palit og tambal, wa mo poko nagresearch nga no. Loss compassion. I don't like it. More. Loss of credibility, at least in my own belief of myself. And the word attic comes along. Tinood ba na yung gusultinel? Na you care, you, you pray, the atticism. Loss of sense of gratitude. Loss of tenderness of heart. Last Sunday when Kate sang the song, that the gentle arms of Jesus, I, I, I recognize that lost again. Oh, therefore, this is my list. What's yours? You don't have to tweet that. Be aware of that. The list is not for your own listing, listing. The list comes from God telling you. Wala na ba? Not to evaluate you, but to rescue you from yourself. Chaibap, matinabangon kayong simbahan. We help missions. Something is also spiritually lost. Find that out. As the psalmist used the words, I cried to you, O Lord, I begged the Lord for mercy. Let us avail of this venue. In this, in grief, we let go of our addiction to control. We realize we belong to a community that is also grieving in another way. Amen. We belong to a community that is also grieving in another way. If you've been quarantined in the most despicable way, in the most isolated way, I can only understand one of my friends said, Pastor, you just don't know the mental torture as if diabolical whispers for 14 days. If you've been there, you finally said, I am a community. I belong to people who are suffering. The process of grieving somehow opens a venue for healing. For the Lord Jesus Christ said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And I must add, Blessed are those who allow others to mourn, for they too will be comforted. In this grief, we need three things. Number one, we ask the hard questions alone and alone. Sabi tao may ko. Some of you can survive alone. Bravo! But you cannot grow deep alone. Tama? Sa balay, my wife and some of you women have been, you know, zooming. Dugay mas mahuman. Ay kadlaw na. May mga babae mag-Bible study na hurot na ang Biblia. O pa sila na human. Chika, blah. Ako naman, I realize, that's a long. I don't know how you do that, but you, you find someone, you ask God for someone that allows you to ask the hard questions, allowing the pain of our losses to enter our hearts. This is some pain you cannot be allergic of. I was watching my favorite show, Blue Blood, last night. <laughs> Nanay bagong season. This woman, uh, divorce, Erin, 
finally talk to his husband, her husband, Jack. Divorce na siya, dugay ng panahon. And do you have a minute? And yeah, I have a minute. What do you want me? Why are you here? And, and Aaron said, I just want you to know you hurt me. Grief. You hurt me. Nanaisip ko lang si Blue Blood. We unveil our honest feelings alone and along as the Henry Nowen would say having courage to let our wounds be known to ourselves and be felt by ourselves. And number three, we learn to humbly release. That's grief. What was lost may never be back. It is in God's hand. But what is important, you have admitted something precious is lost. A Lutheran bishop, a lady, said, because they lost their child, for years they grieved until their counselor was saying, Bugat king isulti sa counselor, maradi po ko ka dawat as a Pinoy ba? It's about time that you accept that you are former parents. Namatay naman. Former parents. That's tough. And the moment they begin to accept, grieve over it, what God allows to happen in my life, then healing starts to happen. True healing happens at the moment that we face the reality of our losses and let go of our illusions of control. David would say, I'm, I'm sorry. It's not the first time he did that, by the way. The difference is, in the Christian world, about this grieving, God grieves with us. Amen. Ningo na lang taong ginoo sa angel, tama na. Put back your sword. I wish God would say to COVID, enough. Enough. Enough, Lord. I wish God would. Tama na, Lord. Enough. Second word, grace. Look at the verse. Hear me, Lord. Have mercy on me. Help me, Lord. That's, you don't know how to pray? Start there. Ikaw na lay sumpay. Hear me, Lord. Have mercy on me, Lord. This is not a theological prayer that talks about this and that. This is grace. Lord, hear me. Ang dami ko nang, I know a lot of definition of grace, unmerited favor, blah, 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 from the Reformation point of view of grace. Until this one, I remember in my youth, as I was studying a, 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 a book, I heard a preacher said, because in those times, I can read and listen to a tape at the same time. Believe me, I can do that now. I can't even remember what was my last word. Nakadungog ko ba? The pastor said, Grace, what is your symbol of grace? He said, Grace is God's ambulance. Whoa. If you see an ambulance, you don't expect a healthy person inside. You don't expect a person inside who can help himself. Someone is helpless inside that ambulance. God sends the ambulance to Chaiba. God sends the ambulance to you. Chaiba. Thank you, Lord. My ambulance is sufficient for you. Ambulancia, you don't see a dignitary there drinking coffee inside. Someone's fighting for life. Someone who cannot prove anything, but tabangi ko ninyo. Help me, Lord. If grieving is an awakening, then grace is a much needed space where we connect with the merciful God. And what I mean by that is prayer. God honored prayer to connect with Him. It opens breathing holes so we don't suffocate ourselves in grief. Grace to be human. 
Amen. Woo. I'm, I'm the, at this point, I'm thanking my, my wife, my children, my uh, close friends. I still have allowed me to be human. Grace to be slow in our pace. Dili magdali. lang. Next year will be a year of slower gear. Tama ba? Slower gear. Grace to battle our own stubbornness. Grace that permits sadness, not automatic gladness. Stop pressuring others to be happy. Stop pressuring others to be okay when they are not okay, but rather be an alongsider with them. Hiluta na lang ang tiil kaysa magyaw-yaw ka dihag doktrina. Copy that? Bring vegetables, bring, I don't know. Grace, the grace of God sustains and transitions us from our weeping over our losses into dancing of our new spiritual discoveries. The moment you grieve, you're learning the steps of gladness already. The moment you, it's only a matter of time wherein joy comes full blast. Grace that helps us translate our spiritual depletion into spiritual rest and rejoicing. For those of you who need time alone, give yourself grace. Disconnect. I also just seclude, but don't stay long. For maybe others need you. Diba? Paul wanted healing. Lord, how can I make sermons? How can I preach when my eyes are irritating? God said, my grace is sufficient for you. I don't know how long, three months grief, three months grace, three months gladness. No timetable, but I know there is still the last G, gladness. I'm excited. <laughs> you have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. Verse 12 is very chai bap. Very, I take verse 12 personally. And I may sing praises to you and not be silent. Oh Lord, I will give you thanks forever. We cannot sing. The EO still stands. We are still GCQ. Pero, when Kate sings, I, I think this is what I'm saying. Our loss of singing during pandemic leads us to finally experience deep worship. Deep worship. Hear my prayer, O Lord. In fact, if you are a musician, you should know that because of the loss then we are now able to worship with less perfectionism, less entitlement, and less critical others. What's your comment about the Roman Catholics going to Chiapo and falling in line? I have, I don't agree, but I have no time to <laughs> interpret that. Because only God knows. I'm a Baptist. I don't agree with a lot of teaching, but I have now space. Our God is not hostage by man or excess of religion. Diba? In fact, ang ganda ng tema ng Nazareno. Ako ito si Jesus, huwag ka matakot. Ah, amazing. Of course, the Baptist, uh, tama man. Of course, not the word. Go deeper. And maybe, 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 the one I told you lost, God is returning it slowly. I can now have a little compassion of the woman who said na stroke gi wheelchair dito sa Nazareno gusto gud ko maayo sa una 
taka ka lang ng, I don't still agree, but this time I said, Luoy, uy. And because of that, maybe I'm learning the steps to be glad again. Maybe. How glad were you when you lost your sense of smell gone and the Lord returned it? Hmm, ang baho na himong blessing. Tama ba? So una, awayan naman silingan kay yung baboy ba? Karun, salamat sa baboy. Baho kay ang kuan. Hallelujah. Something's changing. Gladness in the midst of <laughs> not say the word. In church, gladness, at least I can hear Kate sing. Dulot kayong kanta ron. Last Sunday nga kanta, ako kalimot. Napasa kong una-una. Sa ganito. <laughs> oh, I want to know you more. Ah, gispatify good ko na eh. Pila naman ang ikanta dari. Di ba? Pero bakit ngayon? Diba? Maybe God is returning the song. Maybe the favor is now. Maybe the angel is putting back the sword. Hallelujah. Maybe God is saying to Chai Bap, I'll give you a chance. Maybe God is saying to you, I will not want you to die bitter or resentful. Let's conclude. Gladness comes last after we all learn to be mourners in our spiritual loss or other losses. Mourners. Gladness comes purged, purified, overflowing when it comes from the Lord, not simply connected to the happy events in life. It comes from the fountain of joy himself. YouTube accidentally popped up an interview with Ruth Graham, the daughter of Billy Graham. I'm not sure if you can find that, learn a lot from it. She said this, grieving. Growing up in an evangelist family, of course, Mr. Billy is one respected evangelist who did not die perfect but lived clean. Today we are all suspects. Here, that gladness is not directly connected to the happy events in life. It is connected to God himself. Kapila naman ka nagminyo nang buwag, minyo na pod. Because you think gladness comes from changing partners. And besides, you're getting old. Erwin Lutzer is right. Pastor Lutzer is right when he said, when, when you divorce someone, I'm not talking about divorce, but people think, I want to be happy, I live this one, dili na pod ko. I like his illustration. It's just like changing Hammer and hitting the same thumb. You know why David can smile again? Because David repented. Have you tried that? Gladness comes with a purpose. Praising, gratitude to God. Gladness is manufactured in grief. Sustained by grace, ambulance, finally, like food panda or you order online, delivered at your doorstep. I like that part. That's my struggle too. Maybe yours. Finally, glad acceptance of what God allowed in my life. Layo patadihan, no? Sige lang, we're on the way. And then you can smile. Your kid who died will not resurrect from the grave, but as parents, you now say, former. Your marriage will never be repaired because the damage is. But now you have accepted, not as a disclaimer, but a sovereign hand of God, allowing painful things to happen to me, gladness has come. Amen. From spiritual loss to spiritual death, 
What a long journey of grief, grace, and gladness. And don't forget the double A in between. Alone and along. We we'll listen to Kate. She'll sing, but we will sing in our hearts. Pasig matintal mo kanta, ibutang na lang ng mga face shield. You can lip sing or what, but I know you have, we will all just in, respond to the Lord as she sings this song and we'll close the service. as we pray Abba we will only understand spiritual loss when we tasted spiritual life gracious father grant life for many of us here who are willing to say Lord Jesus have mercy on me a sinner hear our prayers O Lord Amen let us lift our hands in surrender to the Lord, Lord Jesus. Many of us have distanced ourselves from you. You never drifted. 
We did. You never left us when we got tired. We got tired of you. We no longer long for your presence. We, le we felt betrayed by many complicated issues. Lord Jesus, in this desperate moment of great spiritual loss, grieve with us. Grant us grace back to gladness in your embrace. O blessed Holy Spirit, breathe on us your life-giving grace, ambulance, and we might not suffocate in this hour of suffering. Gently whisper to us, indeed, weeping may last through the night. Pero bukas, what a joy. What joy comes with the morning. Lord, hear our prayers. Amen. As we remain standing, I think we need to hear it. It's not in trying, in trusting. Just sing it here in your heart. In your heart. say the closing prayer and we stay for one minute in church while Felix and Popong will play this one, just pray ask God now Lord give me grace that I will be back next Sunday one minute pray hallelujah joy comes in the morning upon you, gracious unto you, and give us all peace. So Lord, light the way back to our first love. In Jesus' name, amen. All rise, please. Hear our prayers, O Lord. According way, can you look to your right, to your left? Di naman tama kasi kans, but nod your head and say, "I'm glad you're here. God bless you. God bless you." Please all be seated. I will tell you the instructions how we will dismiss. The first one to leave are the people at the balcony. God bless you. Please find your way slowly and you drop your offering. Give thanks to the Lord. Those of you are watching through live stream, we want to thank you for joining us. This morning, if you want to share your offering, we cannot give you the bank account 
just say, text the number, you will see. Miriam will text you the bank account. If you belong to other churches, ihatag ang inyong mga halad sa inyo gid nga simbahan in your church. And for those of you who are here, as the Lord convicts you, uh, share part of worship. But before you drop that, say a prayer in, in your heart. There are prayer links number. You need a prayer request. Send it there. Someone is assigned to pray with you. Would you pray for me for the two o'clock service? Pray for your pastors. Okay. On this side, on that side, pwede na mo katindog. So center bilin gamay. You can quietly leave. like to ask you if you want try the Saturday Luag pa kayo, 10 o'clock and 2 still the same sermon same songs Sun, Saturday 10 if you, kung guot na ta sa 10 sulayin yung Sabado okay, okay pa kado. wait for a while keep praying it is good to be in the house of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, DXFE, for airing our program. For those who don't have computers, oh, you can now rise in the middle row and quietly leave God's sanctuary. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.